Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back again online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture the synergy. In my previous lecture, I have explained you about different structural arrangement, structural form in uh, the area where it is basically windy or heavy storm uh, is uh, a common phenomena and we have seen how different uh, form, different shape, different height and different structural arrangement could help to reduce the risk associated with uh, the wind and the heavy storm. Like that in this lecture, now we are at uh, lecture number 32. In this, we will be discussing on the structural form and architecture in seismic prone area, which is also very important, especially uh, like if we consider uh, in case of India, also we have certain zones ha having high risk of uh, earthquake. So, in this lecture, we will focus on different form uh, that are prescribed, even different form that are not really recommended for seismic prone area. And also, we will see how we can reduce the risk of uh, the damage of building during the earthquake. So, let us get start this. So, at the beginning of this lecture, uh, let us just understand the earthquake or uh, seismic activity. So, it is basically the shaking of the surface of the earth resulting uh, from sudden release of energy. So, this energy may be generated uh, due to volcanic eruption, due to you know different uh, pressure, different stress for the tension and compression and it is normally uh, be happen in the lithosphere of the earth. Uh, um, section and it is very sudden and it is very rapid shaking. So, within very uh, few seconds, we will really feel havoc shock of this kind of earthquake. So, in recent times in India, uh, way back in 2015, uh, during the month of uh, April and May, that time uh, the part of the border adjoins like Nepal and Bihar. So, th those parts actually felt a massive earthquake. So, it depends on the intensity and it depends also uh, like where the earthquake uh, evolved and then like depth of the earthquake. So, in this case, uh, if you see that uh, below the earth surface where our earthquake generates, where it uh, nucleates evolved, that is called hypocenter. And then uh, just perpendicular to that point to the earth surface is called epicenter. And whenever the depth is more and again the um, uh, density, again its intensity is very high. So, that will actually propagate with some wave and that can expand over large area. And this earthquake, uh, the scale of the earthquake as we can see here uh, in this slide that it may be very weak that we cannot feel. If you search in internet uh, each day, uh, a number of earthquakes happen uh, across the world, but hardly few of them are really felt because of maybe the uh, intensity is not that much in Richter scale or maybe uh, that depth of this hypocenter is not that much that it will uh, really propagate enough. But sometimes if it is uh, and, uh, you know very close to urban area or the intensity is quite high, uh, maybe uh, more than 5 or 6 in Richter scale, then uh, definitely it will be havoc. So, in this uh, uh, sudden and rapid shaking, it is uh, also happened due to the breaking and shifting of the rocks beneath the earth surface. As because we know the, uh, you know, if you know the property of the soil, so, even uh, the core of the earth is still very warm and then uh, the portion is in very semi-liquid form somewhere. So, sometimes due to you know uh, the release of the energy, so that 
the plates they will just you know uh, overlap each other or they will slide on each other and that is the reason the earthquake generates. Coming to the wave as I already explained that when the depth is more then uh, the wave will also propagate and that will span over a large area. So, basically the seismic wave being classified in two category one for the surface one for the body and the body will have two type of waves one is P wave and one is S wave as you can see in the slide and whereas the surface the wave can be of the love wave or the relay wave. So, what exactly that is let us understand this. So, whenever uh, like you have some object uh, solid object like this and you just try to hammer it uh, from the bottom. In that case what will happen that it uh, the suddenly the lower portion will get a concentration of the stress and then it will try to move to upwards. So, this is the vibration is really move upward. So, if we just try to figure it out with some phases. So, first phase you get the stress concentration here, the next level it will go to the upper level and like that it will go at the top and again it will repeat from the bottom. The time I have taken to explain this in reality it happens even is very less time. So, it is the movement and this movement can be uh, you know this wave can be passed through your uh, air can be of liquid and can be of solid. Now, this is the P wave that also generates where this movement can take place. So, you can see that the direction of your uh, stress due to the earthquake is this and then how this particular fibers that you can get the stress concentration how it moves like this. Now, coming to the S wave instead of uh, hammering it from the bottom, if you just try to hammer it from the side. So, what will happen? Uh, again uh, just let us try to understand this. So, when the load is being applied from the side, so the bottom portion will try to move towards this direction, where the upper portion uh, will try to be in a static mode and then uh, the next time like when it will try to adjust, so this will move at the upper portion. So, then basically the motion will be something in this and it you will get a form uh, of this particular rectangle like this. So, the art whenever there is an earthquake the stress applied to this will try to move this the inertia will try to keep it and then when it relax uh, release the load release the stress and then it will move up. So, like that the ACE wave also uh, you know uh, be active during this. Now, coming to the uh, love wave, so then again you can see this is the movement of the soil where the portion how it can uh, like shift from one place to other place uh, with some displacement. Where is the relay wave is a rotation, so where it will form a wave and it expand. So, during earthquake all of this happened together. So, basically there will be a shake. So, if I just uh, take this as object and this is as the earth surface. So, that movement is very much uh, like very much repetitive and uh, again the motion is really uh, very fast. Now, coming to uh, the fault that happened like this is basically the deformation of uh, the displacement of the soil like earth surface that happened during this fault. So, it may be a strike sweep fault where we can have a area and you have a river like this and then with the movement of uh, the you know art during the earthquake. So, this will displace. So, this portion will slide on each other. So, this is the strike slip. Now, coming to the normal fault where some portion that basically sinks from the uh, its uh, actual level which was like this and then there is some slip. So, this may be a normal fault. Sometimes it may happen uh, due to the you know plate motion and all the portion they slide up with certain angle. So, this is basically the original level in this and then there is a 
increase. So, this is basically the reverse fall. So, these are different outcomes, different effects during the earthquake. Coming to the uh, you know effects of earthquake. So, again in this slide what we can see that uh, there will be some ground motion, there may be some landslide, ground display, uh, displacement is also one of the uh, major effect. Then liquefaction is very important uh, where the soil uh, will get saturated and that will act uh, really like a semi liquid form. So, that like the whole buildings here you can see that uh, due to this um, shaking in earthquake the portion where the foundation is laid that soil is beaming like a liquid semi liquid form and then the whole building they just flip off. Now, here you can see the displacement the cracks being developed and the particular portion where we adjoin. So, they are having some displacement. So, ground displacement is also there. Then uh, do with this ground motion if uh, something not developed on the soil may be that uh, affect the building directly, but in landslide what we normally been seen that due to the motion it may create uh, uh, for like uh, due to some flood activity or something uh, man made activity or blasting, but sometimes due to earthquake also this uh, landslide happen and here you can see that portion of this road just uh, you know slide and they gone. Now, as a consequence sometimes if your earthquake the hypocenter is being uh, under the sea. So, that may create the huge wave tsunami and in recent times for last 10 years we have uh, witnessed some of the tsunamis that really affect the people, the buildings and uh, damage havocly. Now, the after shock is something where with the main shock then we get a small small uh, earthquake uh, due to the main earthquake. And here you can see that another motion. So, here the plates are just uh, uh, stayed one after another before the earthquake, but during the motion it slipped and due to that there will be some upliftment of this surface and soil release the energy and that is why it creates wave on the water body and that creates the tsunami. Now, coming on the effects of that, so here you can exp uh, get this thing. So, here uh, this wave basically this particular movement that is something rotational. So, now you can relate it with the relay wave and then here is the shaking upward uh, like in uh, the direction of direction and the opposite direction of the earthquake wave. So, that is creating some kind of motion on the building. So, this is what exactly happened. And here you can see that motion that uh, how uh, this can move on this direction at the same time in this direction. So, if you have uh, uh, this axis x y. So, uh, first movement is basically it will try to move this side at the same time it will try to move this side. So, it is basically the movement on both x y direction and then if uh, the building is not properly designed with the structure that is resilient to the um, earthquake. So, that may uh, damage it may have a minor damage minor non structural damage or sometimes it is the total collapse. Now, in this case uh, if you see it carefully the examples is this is the same building and this is uh, with a very minor earthquake. So, here you can only see uh, in detail like there are some cracks developed uh, at the corner of this window. And uh, also uh, remember these things whenever you your building materials will have some joints and the joint is of two materials uh, then basically those portion are vulnerable. Now, from minor to some medium earthquake where uh, there is no such structural uh, failure, but uh, here in you can get uh, the cracks and some of the portion at the beam uh, also develop some cracks, but where is at the major and very sudden and high intensity earthquake. So, there is a damage and which is serious damage where a portion of the wall you can see that it is uh, like fall down and then this is a permanent deformation, deformation that happens. So, uh, depending on the intensity and depending on the building time it, uh, materials their structure uh, the effect will also vary. 
Now, if you see this uh, two G image, so first one I just would like to show you this very slow motion. If you see this image very carefully, and if I try to draw uh, a line between this, so you can see that the line I have drawn is static, but the uh, it varies that there is a very slow motion due to the wave, and then uh, if I draw the line again, so basically it will increase. So in this case will have uh, height. So, the same uh, building is typology uh, building is there and then how the deformation take place. Now, coming to this it is basically one example where uh, it is also called as soft story. So, here the ground floor is basically a tilted uh, uh, you know arrangement where this being normally used for the parking or maybe sometimes shops. So, it is not properly filled. So, the heavy mass they will get some sway and uh, we have to remember one thing during the earthquake uh, especially for the tall building. So, when earthquake attack the first contact uh, area is this surface. So, when this particular surface is try to move with the direction of the earthquake it will try to be in inertia to, to get a move in this direction. Now, the moment it propagate the wave, so it will try to move in this direction, so then it will try to retain back. So, for that it will create the wave and then there will be a shaking. So, left, right and then uh, forward, backward movement. So, like this it happened here and then there is a collapse. Now, uh, before getting into the different structural form or which is ad, uh, recommended, which is not prescribed in different codes. Uh, let us just go through some of the um, images which like we can see the devastated scenario being created due to the earthquake. And this is uh, been randomly taken some examples from uh, the recent Nepal earthquake, some, um, some of them are from the Bhuj earthquake. Uh, and then some of uh, the pictures that have taken from the context of some you know countries uh, beyond India. So, here you can see the damage it is self explanatory that how this uh, has collapsed. Uh, this is one of the landmark in Nepal and that collapsed uh, totally during this 2015 uh, earthquake. This is the scenario again where uh, this is just uh, looking a heap of um, you know building scrap material, but exactly like this is the after scenario of uh, major earthquake. Here you can see the collapse again, uh, especially this particular core being just demolished this part. Then here it is another uh, similarly you can also see and uh, some of the structure are still standing uh, because of maybe they are uh, new in, uh, in terms of the construction age and then maybe something like uh, the structural component um, they used so they are uh, somehow restrained that particular they can they resisted uh, resist that particular wave and now here you can see also it is not really uh, collapsed, but the cracks developed. Uh, which may uh, collapse like after a mini shock or something. Now, this is another one you can see that how devastating this could be and then this is another one. Now, reason for failure. So, there are major many reasons like uh, normally um, the earthquake it depends on the intensity if it is too high probably uh, there is very little scope to uh, really do something we cannot stop that. But what we can do, we can make our structure uh, earthquake uh, resistant enough so that we can get the evacuation time, the time taken to just you know uh, come out from that house which is considered to be very unsafe during that. So, that there will be not that uh, life risk and uh, this is one and the other uh, uh, you know things that we should do to make our building safe for this kind of disaster through different measures uh, like maybe the selecting of the right material, selecting of the right uh, building form that we will be discussing. So, in the reason of failure if we just focus on this slide, so it is uh, related to the soft story. So, soft story is basically where a building 
heavy mass is uh, being there, but the ground floor is being supported with some columns. And normally this is very common for the apartment building where this is being used for the parking or any shop area. Short column sometimes we may have uh, a building where you have uh, the mass uh, at the bottom and above and then uh, maybe a small area where we just use some columns uh, uh, these are uh, there. And then inadequate reinforcement detailing is one of the reason where like sometimes uh, we just in order to minimize the cost we use less uh, amount of reinforcement and that is uh, lead to uh, damage during the wave uh, during the earthquake. Then discontinuous force resisting system sometimes some portion we just make it strong, but that should uh, act comprehensively and then if it is discontinuous so that may develop some uh, unnatural behavior during the earthquake and may collapse. Strong beam weak column so many a times we do not uh, go with the uh, you know um, strong column and we just make the beam depth increase the depth. So, uh, in earthquake resistance structure is basically it says that a strong column and weak, uh, weak beam. So, here it is the reason where strong beam and weak column combination uh, may not perform very well during the earthquake. Inadequate detailing uh, again it is related to the reinforcement and other connection to different parts of uh, the structure. Inferior building material definitely it plays a crucial role even the design is perfect, design is tested, but uh, during the execution the material used for that making that structure is not up to the mark, then uh, that will be a serious concern. Then building adjacency is another one where you have two buildings uh, in, with a very minimal gap to each other. So, maybe this building is strong enough, but uh, this building is uh, creating is hitting uh, like the other building very close to its proximity and that may damage. Now, coming uh, to describe the same thing. So, here you can see that very minimal reinforcement being given and here you can see that the uh, failure due to the soap story. And here you can see that uh, your building may have a infield like there and then these are the very um, you know uh, weak column that being placed and it create the sob story. And then that may be vulnerable. So, similarly to that sometimes we can have a weak story. So, uh, maybe this is uh, this portion is in in case of this in place of this you have this infill and then you have a top fill but in between it is there so during the motion with the heavy mass that will try to go in this side if the uh, earthquake uh, wave direction is on, on that side and this will try to restrain so this portion will show some uh, unnatural behavior. Uh, this is also true when you have very heavy mass at the bottom that may sustain, but the upper floors that are not uh, continuous like uh, that particular resisting power is not continuous and then they, they may uh, deform uh, more than the bottom. So, this is another one and already I have uh, told about the building material and then uh, what you need to do. Uh, is basically to avoid this soap story. So, as I uh, told you like uh, we have to be very much uh, sure about the um, you know arrangement of the beam and column and we should really go for very strong column and weak beam combination instead of the strong beam and weak column which lead to the failure during the heavy earthquake. Now, earthquake resistance structure the design considerations that uh, uh, has a relation with the size of the building, uh, the shape, the basic shape that we take for the building and the position and uh, adjacency. So, these are the design consideration that we need to make along with the structural uh, design. So, that is uh, also very important and we will discuss that different structural arrangement, different structural system by which we can really uh, make our uh, earthquake uh, resistant structure uh, to you know reduce the risk during the earthquake. Coming to the size of the building, so any building will have three dimensions the length, width and uh, like the height 
So, in this case uh, like in all, all this uh, representation if you see that uh, if you see the dimensions this x, uh, y and then z. So, z is much much more than this x and y. So, this is very tall building. So, he, it will be very vulnerable because like uh, again uh, like if we just omit this earthquake part even this tall building will be vulnerable and due to the lateral wind pressure, but even for this uh, like when it is anchored. So, this will have much more deformation during this earthquake. Okay, so, this will create some kind of structural failures, this will be very vulnerable. So, simple frame structure may not be appropriate for this if this is being constructed in earthquake prone area. So, normally earthquake cannot be predicted that much surely accurately, but the zones are being specified so that obviously we have to take that chance as a factor when we go for the structural design. Now, in case of uh, just we just make a flip, uh, then it will be too long. So, whenever a building is too long, so here x, y and z. So, x is much much more than y and z. So, in this case even uh, the motion like as because if this is too long. So, uh, whenever the wave being replaced with so the motion uh, over the uh, area so that will have some uh, difference and then uh, this will develop some kind of uh, you know stress concentration and then torsion effect. So, the moment like what we have seen in the in case of your S wave. So, that may deform something the surface like this. So, this is uh, again not really uh, you know preferable to have it or sometimes even uh, the two different motion from two different parts will be uh, causing more damage. So, what it says that it one dimension is much more or much less than the other two dimensions it will perform very poorly. Now, if we take a large without any expansion joint and all, so a large portion of the buildings then also it will be uh, difficult and it will not really perform well uh, that quick because of if it is uh, covered a very entire area. So, the motion of the arc and different settlement uh, during the earthquake of the subsoil may uh, do uh, like affect this kind of form. Coming to the shape uh, of the building, so it is advisable that you uh, just um, select some basic shape, make the plan very simple and uh, focus on the performance. So, in this case if you uh, see that very you know uh, squarish or rectangular shape uh, or maybe octagonal shape. So, these are uh, considered to be good performer, whereas whenever you make some joints or uh, make something very curvilinear, then that will not really perform uh, well um, uh, during the earthquake. And if you increase the number of joints and then uh, your plan will get complicated, that will unnecessarily uh, you know get affected with the stress concentration and again the torsion effect. And that is why like yeah, if I just want to get it. Uh, Correct. So, we just go with a very simple plan like this which is very acceptable and the shapes where this kind of joints being made T, L or U or maybe H then this kind of corner then maybe a plus building or the cross building or Y junction. So, these are the portions where that is being developed. So, here you can see the uh, trace is developed here. So, cracks will develop if there is a havoc earthquake and also like the motion. So, depending on the motion like as we have discussed that uh, this object will have motion this side as the same time uh, on uh, y axis and the x axis. So, this will create some torsion as well. And when your building is um, again very in a close proximity, one may get affected with other. So, they will hit each other during the motion and then probably that may damage some of the structural components. So, uh, what we exactly want to do is basically to make, make plan simple and then uh, just work on performance. Now, sometimes it is not possible with uh, to go with the basic shape 
and we have to design something like uh, this like many school building hostel buildings are like that. So, it is advisable that you make this building uh, as a two buildings okay, and then you create expansion uh, joints. If possible you just make it apart from each other. So, there will be no such problem of adjacency as well. So, they will not really affect and you know, that is very important. Um, in, the, in this in this context, if you want to make say a building of Y shape and many such towers uh, we have seen having this where the hotel rooms are placed and the corridor is being placed. So, it is better to just uh, make it separate and then uh, this portion you connect it with the expansion joint. So, that way we can also take up those shapes, but these are not recommended as long as we can uh, solve our design problem with very basic shapes for uh, especially the building in earthquake prone area. The shapes of the building if you see the elevation then also like whenever you have some setback. So, two different towers. So, that is also vulnerable here in this case and if you have the overhanging portion and also they will also get uh, you know some kind of uh, issue. Uh, during the earthquake. If your ground is very slopey, so uh, during the motion, so there may be some landslides, so and there will be unequal settlement, so this building may collapse. So, in that case, we have to also take special care. If we want to make something hanging or floating column, then where like you have the heavy structure and then uh, at the bottom you have very minimal structure, they will be also very vulnerable. Then uh, again the soft story and weak story already we have explained and then the discontinuing structural member where uh, the beams and columns that are being uh, stopped it is not really anchored uh, in different sites. So, that may also create the problem. So, the stress concentration and torsion effect are uh, the responsible factor for them. The simpler the plan better the performance during the earthquake that we have to acknowledge. Coming to the position and adjacency again this is uh, uh, what is happening like wherever two buildings and here it is the depiction I have picked up I have given the source you can get uh, some more information uh, if you go by this link. So, in this case two buildings are identical and there will be some motion in this case two buildings are looking identical, but if you see that their floors their uh, you know slabs they are not meeting, uh, meeting uh, each other. So, the point is they are really uh, hitting uh, this particular slab is hitting the middle of the column which is more vulnerable and here also difference like different height of the building and all. So, in order to avoid that what we can do we can uh, use some kind of uh, steep padding uh, absorbing the wave and then we bolt it the two structures. So, that may uh, like help this particular adjacency problem of the buildings. Coming to the earthquake resistant techniques where the structure different structural element different you know component that may help to reduce the risk uh, of uh, failure of a structure during earthquake. So, here is the list if you see the slide now. Now, the shear walls or the structure wall could be one of the option structural bracing uh, can be uh, helpful to uh, you know resist again the lateral load. The tube structure that we will be discussing again when we, dis uh, we when we will discuss on the high rise structure in upcoming lectures. Then the seismic dampers which will actually uh, being, uh, you know help to uh, damp that movement and then there will be less effect on uh, the structure. Then the base isolation is another technique where during the earthquake your whole superstructure being uh, isolated uh, uh, from the base uh, with some um, base isolator then there will be less impact on the building. Horizontal band is also a low cost solution where uh, the you know the um, beam uh, different uh, beam to be provided at different level at the sea level, internal level. And then um, also we can go with the earthquake resistant expansion joint where there is some uh, two buildings are very close to each other or two stru a structure is too large. So, in order to give the joint between them we can use it. So, this being used for the building this may also used for the bridges 
uh, to save that bridge during the uh, you know the motion the shaking during the earthquake. So, we will quickly go uh, one by one and then try to understand what exactly it is. Coming to the shear wall is basically um, what we can say that a column uh, if you extend it uh, in forms of a surface which is cantilevered to the base is uh, basically the shear wall. It is basically made by the RCC reinforced cement concrete and it will perform quite better uh, considered to the um, moment resistant frame or the simple beam column structure. So, moment frame only you can see the deformation with a similar um, wave and then when you go for the bracing you will have another one. So, when we will discuss the bracing we will get the advantage and when you have the shear wall. So, the deformation if you see the displacement is considerably less for the tall structure. If it is to be placed for a uh, multi story building not too tall it will really perform well. But what we need to remember in this case when we place the shear wall so that should have some symmetry. So, if we want to place the shear wall so uh, that should be placed something like that apart from the columns and other thing. In that case, if we just place the shear wall like this a very random uh, selection. So, that may not really be uh, giving the performance uh, what the way we desire. So, always if you want to secure the corners which are vulnerable to the lateral load. So, we can place uh, those shear wall at the corner and all. Coming to the bracing of the structure that we have discussed previously in various cases where we have uh, this frame and then due to lateral load it will always try to deform and if we just use a, uh, uh, a diagonal strut. So, that may act uh, that will increase the steepness of the structure and depending on the position and depending on the shape the bracing can be classified as follows in the slide. So, it may be diagonal where diagonally it is connect. Uh, your floor to floor, where the cross bracing is also possible, where instead of 1, if we add 2, so this will resemble it to this. So, V type of bracing or K bracing is something where uh, the two corners are being connected to the middle. Then the Severon bracing is uh, just the opposite uh, of the V bracing. So, then we also have the K bracing. So, the form of this is uh, basically the K. So, this is called cray bracing and the global bracing where it is not each floor being connected with the diagonal strut, it is basically alternate floor or maybe few floors are connected with a large diagonal bracing. So, this will help uh, the structure to get better steepness and uh, it will perform in a very uh, you know in a better manner during the earthquake the, during that motion. And here these are the examples um, that where this bracing used and you can see that here it is something uh, which is global bracing and where it is basically the again a global one not each floor being connected, but it is a different form. Now, coming to the another solution of this is uh, instead of a simple frame structure uh, why do not we go for a tube structure. So, we will discuss it in detail for the tube structure when we discuss the high rise structure, but in short it is basically where the perimeter the external exterior of the building which is more prone to the lateral force uh, due to the wind and specially. So, we place the column very close to each other and then uh, that is connected with the internal core and that will create a form of a tube with a thickness. So, normally if we take a tube example of a pipe and also this thickness being maintained where like the similar thing uh, being placed where you know the columns are placed is almost uh, uh, core, but with some opening and we can have a normal tube, we can have uh, like bundle tube where different tubes uh, made together and then we can have uh, tube in tube structure like this, where the internal tube is also been maintained. And here you can see uh, the difference like wherever you have multiple such columns, so that will perform in a better manner to resist the lateral load. Coming to the seismic dampers, uh, which is very uh, important uh, tool nowadays to 
uh, reduce the in uh, like uh, in intensity of uh, the earthquake wave and then that will act to just you know damp uh, that motion. So, uh, here are different types one is your viscous damper where the, the diagonal uh, dampers being placed and uh, this particular piston is having the motion with the viscous fluid. So, whenever there is a shock so that will move and that will absorb the shock. Whereas, we can have friction dampers where the plates will slide on each other and then uh, again damp that motion. Now, instead of that sometimes we can go for the yielding, uh, yielding dampers which are very low cost solutions where we use the uh, member the metals which will really you know get this bend to the yield level that due and then with the elasticity it will uh, help to damp the motion. But one of uh, the very famous uh, such dampers is called tune mass dampers. Uh, where uh, heavy mass uh, like a pendulum that is being tuned and you can see that when the force is applied. So, with that motion the building will try to bend on this direction at the same time this will adjust it uh, to the opposite direction and when it will try to sway on the other side then it will go on the other side. So, that it will manage and this being installed in type A 101 tower uh, which is very helpful during that particular motion and especially this being also helpful uh, for um, you know the to resist the lateral load due to the wind. And here you can see the viscous uh, dampers that are being placed like this uh, which will reduce uh, that show So, these are the techniques by which we can uh, really uh, reduce the risk of uh, you know the collapse of the building. So, here with the conventional structure it is attached to that and you see that motion with the ground motion the motion is quite enough and instead of that if you use some seismic isolation isolator uh, which is uh, some kind of you know the rubber material or spring material. So, during the movement what will happen that the whole building will try to shift together. So, there is little deformation on the structural joint. So, this is being useful and here are some uh, live example how the base is uh, base isolated being used for the structure. Coming to the horizontal band as I mentioned that this is something which is uh, low cost solution and the area which is uh, very vulnerable to the earthquake. So, there uh, at the lintel along with the normal beam at the ceiling level. So, at the lintel level uh, this uh, R C C beam is being laid and then that will really help. So, again for the roof, uh, the roof band is being created for the pitch roof and where it is the flat roof. So, we have already the R C C structure. So, this is uh, really going to be helpful. Coming to the um, uh, factor like uh, another technique that is your earthquake resistant expansion joint. So, this will look like this and you can see the movement when there is a horizontal movement uh, away from e each other. So, they will go apart and then when there is a mo opposite motion and then they will just uh, you know try to close each other and that gap is being maintained and that being designed with different frequency and when there is a movement up and down movement. So, it can go up like this it can bend and it can also uh, go down. So, it will rest on this. So, basically this expansion joint. So, wherever is the movement up and down and then you have you know uh, the contraction and then uh, they will go to each other. So, that will help with this joint. So, now uh, we are concluding this lecture what we have seen in this that earthquake uh, is essentially not killing people, but the bad design uh, which will not really sustain during the earthquake uh, will be very much threat to the people. And that is why we have to make our building earthquake resistance and the form that we should take should be very basic form and we should avoid uh, the curve form along with some joints like this or maybe some irregular joints which will be really vulnerable and uh, be affected with the stress concentration and the torsion effect during the wave and then we should really avoid that. So, whenever you have two buildings close to each other we can either use that uh, shock absorber or maybe we can use um, this expansion joint that we have just discussed in the last slide 
and the structural system we can use the shear wall instead of a normal wall or infield we should avoid uh, the shop story ok. So, basically uh, if you have the column so it is better to fill this area and use that ground floor like you have to use the wall. So, we do not make it like uh, wall free and only the column being there with the soft story we will also avoid uh, your weak story we you uh, weak story we have to avoid and then also we have to avoid uh, the structural uh, like deficiency. So, the detailing like the whatever the reinforcements is required we should go for that. Now, shear wall is one component then we can go for the bracing we can use the dampers different kind of dampers we have seen then we can go for the base isolator and then also we can go for the uh, earthquake expansion joints. So, expansion joint may help that uh, to just you know adjust the structure and also we have uh, discussed something about the tube structure. So, there are some advanced structural system uh, for the high rise building to protect against uh, this kind of you know lateral forces. So, with this I conclude here and uh, I am sure that this uh, discussion is very helpful to understand about what type of design we should take uh, to just avoid those vulnerabilities. So, these are the readings uh, material for the readings that you can get something and this is one of the document that I found very useful you can go. So, you will get some uh, you know different uh, information uh, um, some more information about the earthquake resilient structure and all. And with that we will move forward to the area you know structure and architectural form in flood prone area. So, we have covered the wind prone area what should be the case and then currently we are uh, we have just discussed about the earthquake uh, prone area and now we will be discussing on the flood prone area in the next lecture. And before uh, closing this again I thank you all to take part in this course we will be meeting in the next lecture. Thank you very much.